fight. The pretty looking people, the pack can tell you people, they were the devil's children. Greetings from Castle Goring, from Mickey Aurora, and from me. Well, I have so much on my plate today that I am, without further ado, going to plunge right in because I'm just being crushed with commitments. Lily says, Hi, Lady C. May I ask your opinion on the timing Meghan and Harry have gone public with the website and new podcast deal? They are in Canada to promote Invictus and raise funds for veterans. <laughs> How droll of you, my dear. Yet they all have all they have done is make everything about themselves again. Surprise, surprise. It rarely is sickening and the veterans must be fed up as well. It makes no sense because surely it could have waited a few more days before they announced them. No, it couldn't. You know, sting like a bee and fly like a butterfly. Megan thinks that life is a boxing match and she is Cassius Clay who graduated to being Muhammad Ali. That's what she thinks she is. And he's right there with her. Punch. Aren't we clever? Well, before saying anything else, I'm going to make an observation that might have eluded a lot of people. But Harry was asked by William Reeve whether he had ever considered giving up his British citizenship and, and acquiring US citizenship. And Harry is, an, I'm still waiting for that resounding no, that means you are actually take pride in your country. And that since you're in line of succession to the throne of the country, that one would imagine that you at least had some feeling for the country. I mean, I have never in my life known of anybody, even an imbecile, who would be in the line of succession to a throne and to consider the possibility of giving up his nationality, which is what he would have to do if he became an American citizen. Of course, there is a whole upside to this, because should Harry become an American citizen, he loses his British titles, he loses his royal status, and I am pretty sure, although it has never been done before, that it is not possible for somebody who has renounced a British citizenship to then accede to the British crown. Maybe Harry and Meghan realise that they're in bigger danger of being stripped of their royal titles and it's going to be a matter of let's jump first before we are pushed. Now to answer the rest of the question. The timing is as I said sting like a bee and jump around like a butterfly. As long as they are in the news, they think they are succeeding. They think they are relevant. And, you know, Harry and Meghan are in the news more as a couple than the whole of the British royal family collectively on a daily basis. Consider that one as a fact to chew upon. Now, yes, they are in, in, in Canada, supposedly, they were in Canada supposedly 
and I say supposedly, to promote the Invictus Games. But when, what were they really promoting? <laughs> I'm promoting me. Look at me. Everybody else is in zipped up puffer jackets and I'm showing that I might chicken foot them, them cover with white jeans or is it white cashmere? This is what we want to know. <laughs> I mean, but she makes sure she's the center of attention just in her attire and her enthusiasm. And isn't it wonderful that Harry and Meghan are now playing the devotees again? Look how much in love we are. I understand that that is a partly a game plan and partly desperation, that everything has unraveled for them and all their new and fantastic deals are rubbish deals. They know it. It's becoming apparent to everybody else. And they are both trauma bonded and evidently trauma estranged at times. Evidently the relationship is a very volatile. And let's see what happens. Personally, I, to me, the best case scenario would be for them to waft off on a balloon to Mars. Anyway, to continue to answer the question. There are movements behind the scenes by some of the veterans to try to get Harry removed as patron. There is a feeling among some of the veterans that the Invictus Games is no longer about the wounded and their tremendous efforts and their tremendous accomplishments physically that it's all about Meghan and Harry. There are also grave concerns behind the scenes that Harry and Meghan's expenses are excessive. And why do you give a rich man caviar when you can't give a poor man hamburgers? because the veterans have to pay for everything. And evidently Invictus pays for Harry and Meghan. Aurora, quick, honey, go and answer that phone. I think it might be Meg's baby ringing to see if, if we can divert our private plane and send it to her. Tell her that Elton says no, no, because I need it for later. And Elton has decided he likes me today. <laughs> Do you also notice, or I should say, did you also notice that Meghan and Harry were booed on more than one occasion? Now, what does that begin to tell you? And Harry's answers to, and that interview with Good Morning America and William Reeve, who incidentally, I met his father and his father's first wife, Gay Exton, was, actually, I think they weren't married. I think they only lived together. She had lived with all, I think she was married to a beau of mine in the 1970s who had a beautiful house in Fillimore Gardens. 
And he was a very good looking. He was regarded as one of the hot catches of the day. He was very rich. Uh, he was to an extent new money as opposed to old money, but he was so good looking it didn't really matter. And I went out with him once or twice. But he loved Doria, bring the grass. Doria, bring the grass. <laughs> His name was David Iveson. And I am afraid I have never, ever found the ingestion of certain sorts of smoking apparatus <laughs> anything but boring i mean i've always been into ideas and the exchange of ideas and what you really think and how you really feel not oh, chill and cool i'm gonna mask how i feel from myself and everybody else i'm gonna be cool i always used to say cool was crap <laughs> that's what i used to say and i still hold by it but his father as we all know christopher reeve i'm now speaking about uh had a terribly tragic end uh, which is very unfortunate, but doesn't his son look gorgeous and taller than Harry? And he gave a very, he was a very good interviewer, I thought. But Harry also playing the, I'd love to reconcile with my family. But the hint being, but they're not going to reconcile with me because they're awful people. Harry, you're the one who abused them. Your wife is the one who abused them. When, let me put it in terms of states. When Nazi Germany invaded Poland, for argument's sake, did the Poles feel obliged to say, Oh, Uncle Adolf, we love you. We forgive you. Come and do, we are going to allow you to do whatever else you want in our country. I don't think that's how it works, either in terms of countries or people. But Harry's message was positioning himself to be the victim, the innocent, capitalizing upon the Invictus Games. And my understanding from people there is he's gone down, as has she, like a lead balloon. Of course, the press is going to spin it as it always does. Oh, Harry and Meghan are great successes yet again. Interesting that you would go from Spotify to Lemonada, trying to make lemons without sugar. Really, yeah. Everybody's going to buy the sour thing. Yes, of course. Yeah, we're all fools. Karen Jobson says, oh, actually, before reading out what Karen Jobson says, may I make another point in terms of the supposed reconciliation that Harry is now articulating he would like with the family and he's open to it. How magnanimous of him. Just as how Hitler was open to the surrender of the Poles and the French, which they got, and the Dutch and the Brits, which they never managed to get, and the Italians, Northern Italy, once they invaded it, etc., etc. 
Harry is playing a really nasty card to gain public approbation because he knows that no one in the royal family trusts him. And you notice he dodged, of course, hiding behind the fact that he can't violate his father's privacy. Oh, of course I can't violate my father's privacy. I love my father. I love my family. That's why I treat them so badly. And that's why I made my wife accuse him of being a racist. And we've not taken it back. And they don't trust me. And that's why they won't give me any information at all. Not even the time of day. That's right. Not even the time of day. I have been told nada, nothing. Of course, his father received him. And received him for the grand total of 12 minutes. But his father knew he was being played. Harry knows. The whole family knows what metal he's made of. Meow, 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 whip! Meow, 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 whip! Whipped to within an interest of Kitty's life. Meow! I do anything, anything. Just tell me what to do, Meg. Just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. No, I'm not afraid of you. No, whip. No. If you get my point. And Karen Jacobson says she has asked to be addressed as ma'am. Who does she think she is? Well. That originates with Scott Moore, who is the new CEO of Invictus, because you see, Harry and Meghan have recalibrated themselves via Sussex.com as the American branch of the royal family. They are America's resident royals. <laughs> Cock my finger and take tea. I'm so classy. Well, Scott Moore, who has been parachuted in to rescue Invictus Games from the disaster, which it has behind the scenes threatening to become, let it be known that he was informed that Harry and Meghan should be addressed as sir and ma'am. Now that is perfectly correct with royals. And Harry and Meghan are still royal. They're not allowed to use their royal highness because the protocol is with royal highnesses in the first instance, it is Royal Highness, and in the second instance and thereafter, it is either Sir or Ma'am. Well, they can't be addressed as Roy Your Royal Highness, so it just is Sir or Ma'am. This is where the anomalous and contradictory and befuddling and muddling elements of their status which is confused and confusing and they are taking full advantage of it to present themselves as fully fledged royals out of the British Isles and they are behaving accordingly. I told you some time ago the brand was being separated. Harry was going to become a very royal and Meghan was going to be de-royalized and run with everything else. Do you not see that that's what's happening? But Meghan has to hop on the royal bandwagon. Otherwise, everyone says, 
Who's she? Who's she? Oh, where's she come from? Hmm. Christine Cook says, I was under the impression that a royal patronage was to donate their time and maybe money. Usually not money, actually. That's done privately and quietly to causes that they hold dear, but not in terms of their royal patronages. There's a difference. So I make that point for what it's worth. The Harkers do the complete opposite. They cost the charity money and donate nothing but their time and or any money from their foundation. It's just one big grift. Well, this is the complaint amongst some of the veterans and the veterans' families because the veterans have to pay for everything. Harry and Meghan. Boy, come here. Girl. Beulah, peel me a grape. Oh, we're so great and grand. Oh. I couldn't fly commercial if my life depended on it. I'm too grand. Now, if the other one wishes to fly commercial, he's welcome to. I mean, who's he? He's nobody special except through me. I mean, <laughs> Meghan Markle, star of suits. He's just a British prince and a dunderhead at that. Maul says, Dear Lady C, it seems that the Markles have had their private jet travel and all other luxury expenses paid for by the Invictus charity. I would like to know the total spent on Harry and Meghan's trip to Vancouver and Whistler. Let's not forget, they went to Whistler, which is beyond Vancouver Island. Okay, they went to Whistler as well as, I don't think they went to Vancouver Island actually. I think they flew into Vancouver and then went to Whistler. I would like to know the total spent on Harry and Meghan's trip to Vancouver. Isn't Harry wealthy enough to pay his own costs? Surely this money should go to the veterans. I'm appalled that Invictus operates in this way, all the while promoting Harry and Meghan as great humanitarians and philanthropists. Is this what happens in all charities? The people at the top get luxury expense accounts? Well, regrettably, Maul, this is happening more and more with charities. When I started charity work, which I did at 22, uh, the very first thing I organized was a gala to raise money to buy a fetal heart monitoring unit for the University Hospital of the West Indies Obstetrics and Gynecology Department which I did, age 22, did the whole thing myself. In those days, women from what used to be called nice or good backgrounds did charity work for nothing. The charities were run by professionals who were usually well-born and well-bred and sufficiently moneyed that they didn't have to take massive salaries. It started about 15 or 20 years ago and it's emanated from the United States of America where charity became more or less a business. And now many organizers of charities are on a quarter of a million, a half a million per annum. Normally, guests, if they are grand enough, might be given limited hospitality, but to have their private planes paid for, no. And 
well-bred, well-off guests, when they're offered, usually say, thank you so much, that's very kind of you. Whatever my expenses are, please donate them to the charity and I will pay for everything myself. I know what I'm talking about. I've done it and everybody else I know has done it as well. Only if the patron is not well off will the charity incur an unnecessary expense will incur, sorry incur a necessary expense because every now and then there is a patron whose name is so big and who is so eminent and who doesn't have a great deal of money but their presence will bring in the punters Harry and Meghan's presence, will they, will their presence bring in the punters? This is one of the debates that is rattling on behind the scenes with some veterans and some people in Invictus saying, excuse me, this has become a gravy train and this has become the Harry and Meghan show and this is not on and the veterans and the games themselves are going to suffer and no amount of attention that Harry and Meghan bring justifies the expense of having them or, their, or the controversy surrounding their attendance. Because Harry's the patron, Meghan is not the patron. Why is Meghan there with Harry? Do you see the king doing things always with the queen? Did you see the late queen doing things on her own or and Prince Philip doing things on his own? It is virtually unheard of for a royal married couple to consistently do things together. That means they are not doubling up, they are halving the attendance. Because instead of it being two of them for two things, it becomes two of them for one thing. That's how the charity world has always worked. But of course, no rule that, and all these rules make sound sense if you stop to think of them. For instance, if the Duke of Gloucester goes X and the Duchess of Gloucester goes Y, you get twice as much out of them. Well, if they're together, You've got half of what you would otherwise have got. With Harry and Meghan, it's always what they want. And is it worth it? This is the question that's being asked behind the scenes. And I would encourage people to continue asking it because there is a movement to defenestrate the charity of the Sussex bindweed. Soul Boy Groovy says, I find it shameful that these two, who are known grifters, are being given all these expensive perks due to the Invictus Games. Who exactly makes these decisions to allow all this money being wasted on two fools? I'm embarrassed to be Canadian and disgusted with our Prime Minister and those involved. Love your show, Lady C. Well, insofar as I am aware, Justin Trudeau has not, and I could be wrong, has not paid for their security. The Invictus Games... is a charity that is separate from Canada. It just so happens that they're going to be the Winter Games at Whistler and the Summer Games 
in Vancouver, if I'm not mistaken. So the decisions are made at Invictus. And the situation is going to continue as long as Harry and Meghan can get away with what they're doing and as long as the organizers of the games believe that Harry and Meghan are an attribute. And even now that many people know they are not an attribute, they are nervous of dumping Harry because they are nervous of offending the king. That's right. They don't understand that they're not going to offend the king. And they're certainly not going to offend the next king who stumped up a million pounds to get the whole operation started, whose contribution not only fiscally but in every other way has been erased. So Harry becomes the permanent and only founder when of course he wasn't. He only had the idea of replicating the warrior games which was in itself a replicate of the Paralympics. I mean it's not exactly an original idea. I hope that answers the question. Tina Stahl says, I'm at a loss why Harry still holds Invictus as a patronage. It's costing them a fortune in expenses, the private jets, the clothing expenses, accommodation, etc., etc. If they dumped him, they'd have more money for the event and the veterans. All they do is tarnish the entire event. Tina Stiles, that is the thinking of many of the veterans behind the scenes who have been trying to get enough of a quorum, let's put it that way, to have Harry ultimately moved on. But you know, a lot of people, including a lot of the press incidentally, don't really know how the royal system works. And they they have a wealth of presuppositions and misconceptions and that will work in the favor of a miscreant royal as it's proving to be the case. I now have a very good observation from someone. A size says Harry and Megalia's attempts to make money off Sparry's title is going to get old and finally useless. There is no rebranding that will help them due to their despicable behaviour. They will fade into obscurity except in their own minds. It won't take long, in my opinion. I agree with you. I think we are witnessing the process as it happens. You know, their stupid website about how much they they care about community and family and compassion and all the rubbish, philanthropy, humanity, humanitarianism, one act of compassion at a time. They love family. That's why she has lied about the king, about the Princess of Wales, about her own father and none of them will speak to her. Notice how I put it. I think we are seeing the fight back that this is the second wave. They are trying to re-establish their brand as I predicted some months ago. Actually I didn't predict because I 
I'm not a fortune teller. I was informed it was happening and I believed that it was accurate information and so I conveyed it. So I shouldn't make sloppy statements and that was a sloppy one. Naughty girl, naughty, naughty, naughty girl, bad girl. So, everything else has failed. All of this is going to fail as well. It will be a miracle if anything succeeds. I mean, lemonade, or give me a break. And we're going to speak about the challenges to womanhood. I'm a feminist. You know, so I'm going to interview Megan for a second. So now tell me, my dear girl, since you're such a feminist, how did you succeed? Was it entirely through men and with men or without men? I'm like George Washington. I can't tell a lie. It was entirely with and through men. Oh, well, I'm so pleased to see that you were honest. Oh, you value honesty, don't you? Oh, yeah, constantly. I mean, I'd never tell a lie unless it suits me. And I'd certainly never destroy anybody's reputation unless I was envious and jealous and eaten up with envy and, and decided that it was in my interest to create trouble for them. Oh, man. Come here, Dolly. I have something new to tell you about Pa and Waity Katie. What else shall we call her? Sweetie Beauty. <laughs> I'm so clever. I'm so funny. I'm just, well, have, have you never noticed? I have more personality than anybody. And I'm better looking than anybody. And I used to be whiter than anybody, but now I'm browner than anybody. Oh my goodness, I'm so versatile. Mm. I agree with you. I think it's, you know, once you've seen through someone to the full vacuity that exists. They're not going to be able to tell you how wonderful and marvellous they are. And you believe it. Strabo says, when the Queen was alive and disallowed them from abusing their titles, these two fools came out with this statement. While there is not any jurisdiction by the monarchy or cabinet office over the use of the word royal overseas, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex do not intend to use Sussex Royal or any iteration of the word royal in any territory, either within the UK or otherwise, when the transition occurs in spring 2020. This was a direct FU to the Queen. The truth is nothing will stop these two from using the, the titles and like it or not, the current king is not doing anything about it. I agree with you that it was definitely a poke in both her eyes. I mean, if I could publicly say what I know privately was the... Uh, wording used to to describe the queen and i i but i can't do it i can't i'm afraid but it was utterly disrespectful it was who who does this something something woman think she is i mean who does this one word I'm not going to say what it is. Woman who thinks she is. <laughs> on and on and on. Well, they have used the word royal. They are in the sussexroyal.com website. As long as they drive traffic to or from it, 
they are using it in defiance of their very statement. Now, this is their own statement. Where things get confusing is that people do not seem to understand there is a difference between royal and title and surname. But I addressed that the other day, so I don't think I need to go into it again, but I am amazed by the confusion and may I say the lack of knowledge on the subject. Maybe because of my circumstances, I am fully au fait with what each thing means and how relevant it is, because it's all code. Each description has a meaning and each conveys a message. Harry and Meghan are not allowed to use royal whatsoever. And rarely, they should not be using a royal coat of arms either. It is forbidden for commercial purposes. And ironically, Meghan's coat of arms which they are using is out of date as well and as is the part that is Harry's. More than that I won't say. Dare they update them? <laughs> hmm. I wonder what Lord Lyon would have to say about all of that but <laughs> I'm not going to go there because I don't want to say anything about anybody in the Herald's office. <laughs> Coerce Thinking says, the photo of the wife moving in and hugging someone while the spare is still shaking hands with them, says it all. She has no boundaries nor respect for anyone or anything except a camera lens pointed her way. The woman is a swine with the manners of a pig. The woman is crass, a vulgar and pushy. The woman is so beyond the pale that she is just revolting and she revolts people. I mean, I wish I could tell you some of the comments that were said at Terra Nova about her, but I can't. Partly, of course, because they were Jamaican comments in Jamaican vernacular. And I am afraid some of them would get me into big trouble internationally. All said incidentally by Jamaicans of colour. I made that point for what it's worth. Sherry Peterson says, Hi Lady C and Puppers, it just occurred to me. Poor Prince Philip, he must be rolling around in his grave. I heard Prince Dumb and Duchess Dummer have given the children the last name Sussex. Prince Philip would have wanted, in my opinion, for his great-grandchildren to have his name Mountbatten-Windsor. Any thoughts on this, my beautiful Lady C? You're a new friend from Canada, Sherry. Hi, Sherry P. Delighted to meet you. Sherry P, you're going to hate me. I'm sorry. But the children's correct surname now is Sussex. As long as Harry retains the title Duke of Sussex and as long as those children are acknowledged to be his legitimate issue and entitled to the title of prince and princess. They are princes and princesses of Sussex. Sussex is used as their surname. If 
before they were allowed to use the title prince and princess they were according to their official birth registration as the legitimate issue of the duke and duchess of sussex they were archie who was lord dumbarton but he was archie harrison mountbatten windsor with no title but the alias of with me i should say no title in his own right but the alias of earl of dumbarton and she was lady lilibet diana mountbatten windsor i'll use an example prince george's birth certificate has him as prince george bloody bloody blah of cambridge he is now prince george of wales when the parents title changes or the parent becomes closer to the throne then the child's surname changes as well okay so that's basically the reality i know it's confusing i know it's not apparently logical but it is logical if you know the rules and what they aim to achieve annette lingham tellingham says annette no annette lingham it's very difficult when names are together annette lingham says lady c i've been wondering why if the cambridge waleses were such fans of suits why did they recoil when me gain hugged them they aren't stand standoffish with the public so it doesn't make any sense my second question is why did harry fly commercial to visit king charles it may have been the one time that the public would have understood the need to fly private to protect the king from being exposed to all those germs harry brought with him if i'd been king I wouldn't have gotten anywhere near Harry, let alone hugged him. Well, you assume that Harry got anywhere near Charles and that they hugged. You are making an assumption right there. Harry wasn't going to spend all of that money. There was no way Harry was going to spend all of that money. Now, Meghan would have spent it, but Harry, no. And they weren't able to catch a lift from anybody and they didn't have any charity or cause to bankroll them so harry had to fly commercial um as for the will as for william and catherine recoiling Do you seriously believe that William and Catherine were such fans of suits that they were desperate to meet Meghan? You know, Harry and Meghan have told so many different stories that he, at least every other version but one has got to be a brazen lie. And the idea that William and Catherine were avid fans of Meghan is along the lines of Meghan and Harry being great humanitarians and loving family. <laughs> One act of compassion at a time. I plunge the knife into all the people I don't like. I'm so charitable. Daddy, I'm going to write you a letter to destroy you. Yes, I am. Am I not loving and kind? William and Catherine 
fans of suits, yeah. They would have been a far happier to meet Megan had she treated them with the respect that any human being expects to be treated when meeting a stranger who is interloping into their own territory. I mean, I would be absolutely horrified if one of my siblings or one of my friends brought, or my, one of my children brought in a lover who came up to me and tried to hug me. I would recoil with horror. And if somebody asked me to lend them my lip gloss or lipstick, I would decline. I wouldn't even pretend. I'd say, I'm awfully sorry. I don't lend lipsticks. Mononucleosis is what I'd say. Because I've been asked, and I've said it over the years, mononucleosis. I don't have it, but they might. But just saying mononucleosis leaves it all hanging and it's a health issue. But these invasions of privacy are just disgusting. And they disgusted William and Catherine. You know, dignified people cannot tolerate for any length of time people who are as grossly lacking in dignity and sincerity and authenticity as Megan. And on that note, I'll say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. Please keep the questions and comments coming in so I will know what you would like us to be speaking about. Okay, thank you. And if you have truly enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell and take good care and Godspeed.